Oh, hello, internet fans, and welcome to 3B Video. I'm your host, Rotten Roger DeMarco, and today we're going back in time. That's right, we're going to be talking about my top five horror films from 1986. Hadn't done one of these in a while, so I figured now's as good a time as any to come back and rank some films. Personal disclaimer, the way that I rank these films is not by how critically acclaimed they are or the standard fan favorites. The way that I rank these films is just by how much fun I have with them. So my list will definitely vary from yours, but I would love to hear about your list in the comments below. So you should probably do that so I can be like, oh shit, I forgot about that one. But either way, let's get on with it. Coming in at number five is Fred Decker's Night of the Creeps. Thrill me. How could I make this list without including this film? This is a fun, buddy, college romp filled with aliens and zombies and brain slurping slugs and not to mention the best Tom Atkins role that has ever happened. A suicidal police officer who is off his fucking rocker who also has some of the best catchphrases in horror history right in this 90 minutes. If you haven't seen this movie you should probably scour the internet, find a copy, beat up a friend who has a copy, something. Get a copy of this movie and see it because it's fucking hilarious, gory, and amazing. I couldn't in good conscience make this list without including this movie because I absolutely love it. I have a blast with this movie and I think that you will too. So that's why it's my number five horror film from 1986. Moving on to my number four horror film from 1986 is George Pavlov's Rawhead Rex. What can I say? I got a soft spot for this movie. 99% of the beautiful art that you see on this channel is because I reviewed this movie back in the day. I love Rawhead Rex. Shout out to Anya Uribe, wherever you may be. We love you and we miss you. If you don't know about this movie, you don't really need a plot rundown. All you need to know is that this is a Clive Barker original story where a giant demon who looks like he belongs in an 80s hair metal band stomps around the countryside, eats kids, flips over fucking camper trailers, and murders everybody. Oh, and also, he pisses in a priest's face. Yeah, it's awesome. If you want a little bit more of an in-depth review on this movie, click the link in one of these corner things, because I did that a while back. But this is one of those movies that you have to see to believe. A giant demon with glowing red eyes and a mullet just stomping around the countryside fucking shit up. If that sounds awesome to you, then you need to see this. And that's why it had to be on my list because this movie is just a ridiculous amount of fun. But moving on to my number three horror film from 1986 is Mike Marvin's The Wraith. Oh, fuck yes. Now, if that sounds familiar, we did recommend this film a while back on the channel. Question, do you like The Crow? Maybe, some of you do, I know you do. Do you wanna see The Crow? In the 80s? Yes. Yes, you do. Do you like Charlie Sheen? Eh, you go back and forth. Do you like coked up Charlie Sheen? I do. Do you like Clint Howard? If the answer is no, get out of here. This movie is The Crow. Charlie Sheen is murdered by a group of scum fucks and then for some reason gets to return back from the grave to exact revenge on the people who murdered him. The only difference from The Crow is this time, dude is in like a super badass space suit of armor with a shotgun with blinking lights on it and drives a wicked fast car. You got people drinking motor oil and, you can quote me on this, a much better soundtrack than The Crow. Just say it, just say it. So if you like fast cars, you like heavy metal music, you like coked up Charlie Sheen, and you like Clint Howard, then what the fuck are you waiting for? You gotta see this movie, I promise. It is worth your time. And that's why it's my number three horror film from 1986. Moving on to my number two horror film from 1986 is Ted Nicolaou's Terror Vision. I've also talked about this film a time or two on the channel. This might be where the term popcorn horror originated from. Don't quote me on that because there's a lot of popcorn horror out there that Evil and I really love. But this movie was one of those movies I saw when I was a kid and it's got that very familiar Empire Pictures Charles Band brand of camp to it. That was tough to say. You've got a family who gets a new satellite dish 
and the family inadvertently sucks an alien through the satellite dish and it slimes its way through the house fucking eating everything and everyone and it is just stupid fun silly it's a great movie to introduce kids to horror for sure i mean there's some orgy stuff and some sexy stuff and some lube and all this stuff but uh i saw it when i was a kid and i never picked up on it maybe i'm just an idiot i don't know but sure let your kid watch this you've got my blessing it was really hard not to put this at number one for me because any chance I get, I'm like, you know what sounds fun? Terror Vision. And I watch this movie all the time. The selling point for this movie is Garrett Graham. Bud the Chud himself. That's right. Bud the Chud reference. Deep cut. But I watch this movie all the time and that's why it came in at number two. It was fighting for that slot at number one, but somebody's got to come in second place, right? So coming in at my number one horror film from 1986, is George Dugdale and Mark Ezra's Slaughter High. If you are not new to this channel, I have spent a lot of time gushing about my love for Slaughter High. But if you're new here and you don't know about Slaughter High, let me tell you something. It's this little tiny horror film that stars Carolyn Monroe and came out the same year that two other April Fool's Day based horror films came out. April Fool's Day and Killer Party. The difference is this film is about a kid who gets bullied relentlessly by a 38-year-old Carolyn Monroe in high school. They pull a nasty little prank on him and disfigure him for life. So he stages a phony 10-year graduation reunion and picks them off one by one. I have a total soft spot for this movie. I love any horror movie that's about the bullied kid getting his comeuppance for obvious reasons. I, I truly enjoy that. So anytime I get to open my mouth about Slaughter High, you damn well better believe that I'm gonna do it. I love this movie so much that I actually went and got a Slaughter High tattoo. Let's watch, shall we? I actually went and visited Jason Waters at the Red Oak Tattoo Company and got this super gnarly Marty tattoo that is the Cavity Colors artwork of their Slaughter High enamel pin. And I love this movie so much that I figured I owe it a little bit of skin because this truly is one of my all-time favorites. I hope that it comes across very genuine to you guys that when we talk about these movies that we really, really love, that we're not just putting on a mask and that we're not just faking the funk for you guys. I just love the horror genre. I love the horror community and I love all of you guys. We love this genre so much that we're willing to bleed for it. But I suppose I should probably get going because after all, there's a lot of movies out there. Somebody's gotta watch them. So why not me, right? I think next I'm gonna get a pumpkin head tattoo. I've also talked about this film a time or two on the channel. So yeah, we gotta get these burps out. Protein burps. Thank you.